Hey everybody, it's Mike. I hope you had a good weekend. Time for our Monday call. Just wanted to bring up, you know, I always talk about this is a great time to talk about things gone well, things gone poorly, uh, uh, things you want to talk about. That's what these calls are designed for. I talked to one of our guys on Friday and he did not realize that you guys can be live on this call if you want. We just ask that you call in on a phone when you do that. So that, um, uh, well, it just works a lot better because when we have mics, uh, people using VoIP, we get a lot of background feedback and all sorts of things. But if you want to be in these calls live, we would love to have you on these calls live. Just call up via the phone instead of the VoIP, and then you could talk live with me and role play with me and do all those sorts of things. So this is, uh, I haven't talked about that for a long time just because nobody ever, when we talked about it all the time, nobody ever did it. So, But if you'd like to do that, it's a wonderful thing, and we would love that. Uh, because uh, the things that I have prepared for Monday calls would always be superseded by whatever you guys want to talk about. So I have something here to talk about if you guys don't want to talk about it or, or don't have things that you want to talk about. But uh, if you have things that you want to talk about, those are the things I'd rather talk about and I'm sure everybody else would rather talk about. So uh, that's just a reminder that you, these calls can be live if you so choose. Okay? So any uh, – what number, Mike? Well, you just have to – yeah, go ahead and miss I was just going to say it. Um, hit the telephone option in the go to panel that you have and that will give you a dial in phone number um, and also a um, passcode and then it gives you a two digit two or three digit pin number so that that allows us the ability of unmuting you so that we can um, lot, make your phone call live so um, you just dial in with the phone number there's a passcode, and then it'll actually give you a personal PIN number, and that PIN number is assigned to you directly, and that's what allows us to be able to unmute your phone line. So you just enter those items in on your keypad, and you'll have a live phone line. And again, all I do is ask that if that's if you choose to do that, don't put us on hold. Don't talk to your assistant. <laughs> you, when you're on that call, you're on the call, period. So. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is the trip training. Is that uh, you should have received an email that the trip uh, software is up and live now, ready for you to use. So I want to go through the uh, trip uh, 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 program again one more time, so everybody knows what it is. Answer any questions that you have and uh, make it available to you. So the the trip is something that I created be uh, out of. Um, well, I'll explain why I created it here in just a second. Oops. Uh, the not since the mid 1990s have we had a brand new thing to sell, and what I mean by that is is this. And a lot of you know that my history. I had uh, seven or eight years in the business making fifty thousand dollars a year before my income jumped up to three fifty six and six sixty seven and nine sixty seven. There was two reasons for that. The first uh, thing that happened is I learned how to sell, and I was getting a lot of people's accounts using the the five Q system, the three meeting system. So I was getting a lot of accounts from people because I was uh, having them leave their current advisor. But unfortunately, I could not move any money. Why couldn't I move any of the money, do you think? Well, because I said, hey, you got mutual funds? I've got better mutual funds. And when I said, hey, I got better mutual funds, what'd they say? Well, yeah, but I think we're just going to stay with where we're at. And I said, hey, you've got variable annuities? I've got, I've got a better variable annuity. So if I, if I have to have a conversation about how mine is better, how much success am I going to have? You guys should be experiencing this on a regular basis. When you're trying to say, hey, mine's better, is that an easy conversation or a hard conversation, guys? Yeah, not much, Fred. You're right. It's a hard conversation to have. Because here's the thing. You cannot prove that yours is better till they move to you. And there's the catch-22 is what? They will not move to you until you prove that yours is better. So you can't... <laughs> You can't prove this. yours is better until they move to you, but they're not going to move to you until you prove that yours is better. And even if you prove that yours is better, it's difficult to prove that it's enough better for them to make big changes because we've talked about this over and over and over. Do people like to make changes? No. Do people like hassles? No. So even when I had them move all of their accounts over, all I was getting was that quarter of a point trailer on their mutual funds, the quarter of a point trailer on their variable annuities. The 1% uh, management fee on their managed money. So I was sure I was getting that, but that's a hard, you know, when you're spending money to market, it takes a long time to make that back, doesn't it, without that first uh, big commission up front. So what happened in the, in the mid-1990s was that all of a sudden we had two new products come out. 
fixed index annuities and uh, the income benefit rider on variable annuities. So now, when I got in front of people, I didn't have to say mine was better. I could show them mine was completely different. They had never heard. I was getting in front of people, the same people that were moving their money to me, now were moving their money to me and moving their investments once they were with me into something different. So I was making a commission. And the reason they were, they were moving their money into a different investment is because when I showed them something, it was something they had never seen before. They had never seen the concept of an equity index annuity before. They had never seen the concept of an income benefit rider before, where they could get whatever the market made or have it protected with an income benefit rider if things went south. So when I showed it to them, they're like, wow, yeah, let's move that. Let's move. I, I didn't even have to sell. Once they saw something different, they just moved it. So it's much, much easier when you're selling something that they've never seen before than when you're selling something. Because right now, guys, when you show them an income benefit rider or an fixed index annuity, say, wow, this is so great. What do they say? Uh-huh, yeah, seen that. Yep, yep, done that. Because how many people do you run across now that have some sort of income benefit rider or equity index annuity? Almost everybody. So they're all like, yep, seen that, done that, not interested. So you want something completely different. And the trip is something completely different. It's something that they've never seen before. And that really hasn't happened since the mid-1990s. So I put together a, the, the trip presentation, and there's a, a number of reasons for this. Number one is the trip presentation up, uh, stimulates the six uh, 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 factors of the old brain. And what I mean by the old brain is the reptilian brain, because how do people buy, guys? How do people got, buy? Let me see some answers to this. Why do people buy? Is it based on facts? Is it based on figures? Is it based on your proof? Is it based on illustrations? Yeah, emotionally. Everybody's saying emotionally. Exactly. People buy emotionally. And the old brain is the emotionally, uh, emotional brain. So there's six things that simulate the old brain. One is it's self-centered. It only is concerned about itself. Number two is contrast. And we've talked about this over and over and over. We, we are raised and we are taught from an early age how to, how to do things by contrast. How do you buy cars? How do you buy refrigerators? You contrast them between one versus another. When you go to the um, eye doctor, he, they contrast one lens versus another to figure out what works best for you. If you, say to a, if you uh, do a word association, you say uh, up, what's most people going to say? They're going to say down. If you say black, what are they going to say? They're going to say white. We are, our old brain is built for contrast. Tangible output. We buy things that we can touch, feel, uh, 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 see a lot easier than intangible. Unfortunately, we're in the intangible uh, uh, business. We, we sell the intangible, but we have to make it tangible. And that's what I've done with the trip presentation. Alpha and Omega, being an, uh, beginning and end. We only remember the beginning, and we only remember the end. We never remember anything in the middle. And you're going to see how I uh, stress that with the trip presentation. Visual stimuli. Uh, again, we are, we, our brains are wired for things that we can see, not things that we can hear. So when you're yapping at a client, just remember, they're not going to remember anything that you say. Our brains are, are wired. Our brains are unbelievably efficient at remembering pictures. It's, our brains are very, very inefficient at remembering words, sounds, yap, yap, yap. So you want to make it very visual, and we've done that with the trip. And then it applies, uh, we make our decisions emotionally, and as Fred said, then we, after we've, uh, and Fred's typed in here that after we make our decisions emotionally, we always justify it by facts. So we always make our mission, uh, our, we make our decision emotionally, but then we're going to explain why. You know, have you ever talked to a neighbor who bought a, a brand new BMW or, or, or Mercedes? Do they tell you, oh, man, this makes me feel like I'm king of the world. This makes me feel like I'm better than you. This makes me feel like I'm, I'm somebody and I've made it. Is that what they say? Or do they go through a whole laundry list of all of the facts on what, you know, um, the reason I bought this is because, you know, it's very, very safe and it has these uh, blah, 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 blah. And look at here. You know, the, the, uh, Mercedes is known for its uh, efficiency and for its ability to, to uh, uh, make a very, very uh, reliable car. And these cars last, you know, for 200000 that's, is that why they bought it, really? No. They bought it because it made them feel good. Then they're going to explain to you why, in, in factual terms, they bought it. And we're going to use that again in the trip presentation. So, first question I have for you is, do people always do what's best for them? 
So let me see some answers there. Do, do you think people always do no, no, no? Everybody's saying no. You're exactly right. Have you ever presented a plan to a client that l that was unbelievable? You saved them in taxes. You know, you saved them three thousand dollars in taxes. You reduced their fees by four thousand dollars. You were increasing their rates of return. It was simpler. It was easy. Have you ever presented a plan like that and then people didn't move forward? People, d Dale says yes. So they don't always do what's best for them. So. If I walked up to somebody right now and said, do you need life insurance, what would most people say, especially the clientele we work with? What are they going to say? Most retirees, hey, do you need some more life insurance? What are they going to say? Everybody's saying no, exactly. And how self-centered are people? How self-centered are people? Because remember, this is part of absolutely, Al says. So, and, and here's my point to this. We all say we love our spouses and our children more than anything, right? We all say that. But if that was the case, if I love my spouse and my children more than anything, how much life insurance would I have? If I love my spouse and children more than anything, how much exactly, Bill, tons, tons, three million, a gabillion. That's right, Casey, a gabillion. That's what, that's what I would have. But instead, I have a number. I have a good chunk of life insurance, but I don't have a gazillion. I went through and said, okay, I want my house paid off. I want to leave this much for income. I, I mean, I, I went through and had a very specific thing. Cause do I want to leave my wife and kids unbelievably wealthy? No. So I, I, instead, I want to leave them, uh, I want to uh, assuage my guilt on how I would leave them when I die, but I'm not going to leave them unbelievably wealthy. So I, I go through uh, uh, facts and figures in my head to come up with a number that's just enough but not too much. But if I truly love them more than myself, I would come up with too much, right? But instead, I come up with a number that I can live with. Because if I bought all sorts of life insurance, what would that rob me of? If I bought a gazillion dollars worth of life insurance, what would that rob me of? Lifestyle funds, right, John? Lifestyle funds, the things that I could use to buy a, a car or go on vacation or retire earlier or whatever. It robs me of that. So people <laughs> uh, um, uh, are only concerned about themselves. It's all about me, 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 me. And here's why I bring that up. Because I think all of us would like to sell more life insurance, but we find it difficult. And right now, there's about three different ways that I've come up with or, or that are very popular for selling life insurance. One is to sell it versus or, or based on a cash value. So cash value meaning that, hey, if I can find a 40-year-old um, that has a lot of money, too much money to, to, to spend, I'm going to show them that p pumping money into cash value life insurance is a fantastic way to uh, uh, fund retirement. And I think, that's a, I think that's a very valid and wonderful way of selling life insurance. There's only one problem with it. How often do we come across 40-year-olds and 50-year-olds that have more money than they know how to, what to spend? Is that a, a common client or a rare client that we find? Rarely, John says. And I agree. It's rare. We, that's a hard person to find. If we could regularly find somebody that, that would has so much money they don't know what to do with, and they're young enough that we could actually have time for that to grow for them, that would be a wonderful thing to do. It's just hard to find. Yeah, there's funding, Dale says they're funding uh, college for kids and all sorts of other things. You know, and they're buying BMWs, and they're buying lake homes, and they're doing all that instead of uh, uh, looking for ways to put more money away. So it's, it's a great way to sell life insurance, just we don't find that, very many, <laughs> that many people that we can sell that to. Second way is be your own bank or infinite banking or the circle of wealth or whatever you want to call it. That <laughs> is a, a uh, very difficult sell. The reason it's a very difficult sell is this. Well, two reasons. Number one is I have to change people's spending habits. Guys, how easy is it to change people's spending habits? How easy is it to tell people, hey, quit buying that $4 coffee on the way to, to work and instead start brewing your own coffee for pennies on the dollar? How easy is it to say, hey, quit going out to eat so much and eat at home? Do people want to hear that? Why are credit cards so... I mean, uh, for, why do merchants use credit cards? Because merchants bitch all day long about credit cards and how much they cost them and that, that the credit card companies are taking advantage of them. So why do merchants then even accept credit cards? Yes, Fred. Immediate, everybody's, okay, everybody's saying it. Because I can get it now. Immediate gratification. In the United States, we're all about immediate gratification, and when do we want the pain? Later. 
Fred says. You're exactly right. Later. And that's what insurance or that's what uh, credit cards do for us, right? We can buy it right now and then we don't get that bill till later. As with be your own banking, guess what we're saying? Hey, here's what you should do. Suffer your pain now so that you can live better ten years from now. Or fifteen years from now more likely, or twenty years from now more likely. So how many people are really into the whole, hey, I'm going to sacrifice my lifestyle right now, so I'm going to be better off 10 or 15 or 20 years from now? How many people are into that? Is that a, is that a, a, a 9 out of 10 people, or is that 1 out of 1,000 people? So 1 out of 1,000 people. So that's why be your own banker. Hey, it sounds good. It looks good on paper. People will be all into it until you say what? Okay, let's go ahead and do this, and then what do they say? Not interested. And then estate planning, but geez, how often are you going to find somebody who's got a $5 million, $10 million estate that needs estate planning? See, and all of these things have a, a, a problem. And the problem is this, is that the who and the when. What did we just talk about? The, the, the reptilian brain, the old brain, is concerned about who? Who's the, old, who's the, brain, the emotional brain concerned about? Me. That's right, John. Me, 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 me. So with, let's talk about estate planning. Who's that? Who does that affect? Who does that help? Does it help me? No, it helps the heirs. So guess how interested I'm in that? Well, I guess I'm interested if uh, after I've got all my stuff, I'll worry about them then. But are they really worried? About, I mean, when push comes to shove, are they more worried about themselves or the kids? Themselves. So that, that's a problem. So that's the, the who is a problem right here. And then the other two, cash value and be your own banker and those kind of things, that they have the problem of when. When do you see benefits with these kind of things? When do you see benefits with cash value? Yeah, much later. What's much later, guys? Like next year? What's much later? 20 years, John. You're right. 20 years. Because at 10 years, you basically got your money back. Every money you put into it, you get, you're basically at ground zero. You've made nothing after 10 years, so you're talking about at least 15, maybe 20 years. For the, so, and when do people want benefits? Now or 20 years from now? So do you see why people have trouble selling life insurance? They're talking to the wrong who, and they're talking to the wrong when. Well, we're going to actually talk that they get benefits not their kids, and that it, they get benefits now, not 20 years from now. That's what TRIP does. That's why it makes it such an easy sale. So TRIP applies to any couple with more than $100,000 of assets between ages 55 and 72. So why more than $100,000 of assets? Well, because they're going to need some income to protect, uh, to uh, buy the, the TRIP insurance to protect their assets. And about 100000 is about as low as I would be willing to do that. And then all the way up to how many assets they have. Why between the ages of 55 and 72? Well, because before age 55, some of the things I'm going to highlight for the people won't even apply to them. They won't see the need. They'll say, those things will never happen to me. They haven't become mortal yet. So below 55, it's not that you couldn't sell a trip policy below 55. It's just that it, it won't uh, ring true to that person. Why 72? You could actually sell this all the way up to age 80, 85 if you want to. But what do we have, start to have problems after age 72? The insurance starts to get too expensive. So I'm going to show them how they get benefits today. They get benefits today. Not your kids get benefits or you get benefits 20 years from now. You get benefits today. That's the beauty of the trip besides the presentation. Okay? So yeah, and their survivors are going to get some stuff later, but notice that's grayed out. Why? Because that's totally secondary. Anybody that says people are more concerned about their kids than themselves are cracked. They, they had not been listening to their clients. Right? Now here's another important fact, which I was not aware of. According to the 2010 U.S. Census, uh, when does the average American hit widowhood or widow, uh, widow or widowhood? Widow or widower, or whatever you call it. When does the average per person in the United States become a widow or a widower? About 58 and a half. That means 50% of people are going to become a widow widower before 58 and a half, and 50% are going to become a widow widower after 58 and a half. And that's a big thing that we're going to use, that's a big fact that we're going to use with the trip presentation. Because most people that we meet with are what? Over age 58 and a half, which means which side of the 50-50 are they on? Are they on the less than 50-50 chance of hitting widow widow widowhood, or greater than 50-50 chance of hitting widow widowhood? Mo greater than, right? 
And we're going to use that. So, and then we're going to use all the six, or six uh, stimuli of the old brain with the presentation. So, and we're putting together in a three-part, 45-minute presentation. And it depends on, uh, on uh, how quickly you speak. It could be 45 minutes to about an hour. And the first part is going to be about their investment. We're going to tell them their investment is good, right? Because if we try to tell them their investment is bad, first of all, we might have been the one that sold it to them. So do we want to tell them their investment is bad? And if, it's not, if we're not the one that sold it to them, do we still want to tell them their investment is bad? No, because their knee-jerk reaction is to do what? Defend it. But see, when we first talk to them, do they want to make any changes? No. They don't want the hassle. They don't like change. So I have to get them at least thinking about that. So I'll talk to them about how their investment is good, but then I'll say, but could it be better? Are there things you'd like it to do? And what does everybody say to that? I mean, we all think what? Everything could always be what? Better. So we get them thinking, well, yeah, it could be better. So it's a great, it's great, but it could be better, which gets them thinking, well, I guess maybe, maybe some change would be okay. And then we're going to say, well, if it could be better, how would it be in a perfect world? And then we're going to get them to say, there is now a way to do that without giving up what you already have. So you don't have to give up the variable annuity. We're just going to give you some uh, icing on top, the, the icing on the cake. Okay. So you're going to get them to agree to change, and then they're going to own it, and then they're going to buy it. So we don't even have to sell it. They're going to buy it. So how do we do that? So I'm going to go through, if I can pull up here. Aha. I'm going to pull up the trip presentation. So did you guys, did anybody not get the email that talked, that uh, Missy sent out and uh, Trisha sent out? Oh, Missy, are you going to say something? Nope. I was just making sure okay. that there's no questions with that. Okay. Uh, that that uh, this is now available to you, and you can use your, uh, and you should have gotten your, um, uh, code to get in and all of that. So yeah, everybody's saying, okay, they got it. Super. So I'm just going to use one that we already have in here. So I'm going to hit Bob and Mary. Okay. So you see right here, these are this is the only six inputs you have to put in. So it's very, very simple to use. So we've got variable annuity, REITs, fixed index annuity, stock portfolio, managed asset portfolio, bonds, CDs, banks, mutual funds, whatever you want in there, you can or whatever they have, that's what you're going to put in there. I'm going to use the variable annuity because the variable annuity with an income benefit rider is about a, as perfect an investment as you can get. Why? Because, it, because of all the, things, uh, the, all the things it gives you. It gives you growth, it gives you safety, it gives you tax protection. Uh, so you could argue, I'm not saying it's a perfect investment, but I can argue that if you can, if you can overcome a variable annuity with an income benefit rider, you can come overcome any of these other things here. These, these are a lot easier to overcome than even the variable annuity. Okay? And then I'm going to say, is it qualified or is it non-qualified? And then on here, I'm going to put an assumed growth rate. So what do you think the, your, your investments are going to grow at? You can put it in 10, 12, 5, whatever you want to put in there. So we've just put in 5, just assuming a balanced portfolio. And then we've got a uh, withdrawal rate of 3%. So this is how much uh, as compared to your entire portfolio. So if they've got $100,000 and you're uh, going to withdraw 3% to pay for the trip, so if you're going to withdraw $3,000 on a $100,000 portfolio, it would be, 3%. If you had a $200,000 portfolio and you could withdraw uh, um, $6,000, $6, it would be what? 3%. So this is the amount uh, that you're going to draw withdraw out to buy the trip policy as compared to your total portfolio. Now, if they've got a million-dollar portfolio, do you think they're going to need to protect the whole million-dollar portfolio? No. They're not going to need to protect the whole uh, million-dollar portfolio. They're going to protect somewhat less uh, uh, than that. So this is, this is as much an art as science is how much you're going to um, uh, uh, protect. And then the life insurance benefit, uh, that's how much the $6,000 would buy. So let's talk about what the product is. So what is TRIP? TRIP is a guaranteed universal life policy. That's all it is, a guaranteed universal life policy. But we're not using it for cash value. Why are we not using it for cash value, guys? Why are we not using the, the universal life for cash value? So, see if you get, get what I was saying earlier. Why aren't we using cash value? Max Benny's minimum funding. Minimum funding I'd agree with. Not enough time, Eric. Exactly right. So, John and Eric, minimum funding, not enough time. So I want to spend as least amount possible to get the highest death benefit possible for themselves, not for their kids. For themselves, not for their kids. And I don't want to be talking about cash value because when do they get the benefits of cash value, guys? When do they get the benefits of cash value? 20 years from now. So I don't want to be talking about 20. I want to show them how they can get benefits right now. So can you use IUL? Can you use... 
uh, whole life, yes, you could use those things, but they're not, your death benefit is going to be much less or the cost is going to be much higher. So I'm going to show them that the death benefit is the most well-diversified instant gratification type of investment they can get. So that's the product. You can use other products as well, but that's the, what it's been designed for is a guaranteed universal life because it gives the highest death benefit for the least amount of uh, cost. So this death benefit here is going to be on both the husband and the wife. Or if they're living together, then on the man and the woman. So this 150 is going to be 150 thousand dollars on the man and 150 thousand dollars on the wife, which means that let's say they've got a 200 thousand dollar policy, and I'm spending six thousand dollars, which would be three percent of the total portfolio to to fund this. Um, if they've got six thousand dollars and both the husband and the wife have 150 thousand each, are they going to be paying the exact same amount? No. That means the husband, for example, might be paying. Uh, it might cost. Um, 4000 and the wife might cost 2000 to get the same death benefit, okay? But it has to be, the husband and wife have to get the same death benefit. And the reason being is they have to see it benefits them, not their somebody else when they die. It ha they have to see how it benefits them. So if, if the wife dies, the husband gets $150,000 tax-free. If the husband dies, the wife gets $150,000 tax-free. Now, we're not going to talk about this stuff before the presentation. Are the, do you think we're going to talk to them about life insurance before we do this presentation, guys? Do you think we mentioned the words life insurance before we do the presentation? No, everybody's saying no, 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 exactly. No. So now I've got a couple of questions here. We don't see them. No, we don't show them the screen, do we? Nope, you're exactly right, John. We do not show them the screen because we do not want them to know that it's life insurance. So this is for you to put in to come up with the actual presentation for them. Okay, so... I've, you won't come up, you won't put both of these in. You won't put both the 3% and the 150000 in. You're going to determine which one of these you want to use. So if it's hundred, if you determine I want to give them $150,000 worth of life insurance, then you'll call up your uh, marketer and say, okay, how, I've got, here's my um, two people, 162, 163, and what, how much would it cost to give them $150,000 each? Or... You'd say, you look at the portfolio and say, hmm, they got $200,000, of which $100,000 is in a VA, and if I just took the guarantee, they're not using their guaranteed income rider now. If I just took that guaranteed income rider, that would give me uh, $5,000. So I'd call up and say, I've got $5,000. How much life insurance would that get me? So you're going to either give them the dollar amount you have, or you're going to give them the life insurance amount that you want, not both of these. Does that make sense? Most of my clients are not in the 33% tax bracket. Guys, why do you think that I use a 33% tax bracket here, guys? Are we talking about tax brackets now? Is this talking about tax brackets right now, guys? No, John says no. So who's, who, what tax bracket are we talking about here then, guys? Future Casey. So do you think it's a wild leap to, to uh, and again, this can be changed. You can change this to whatever you want. This is the uh, default is 33%. But remember, you're not talking about what tax, taxes are right now. You've got to be tax talking about what taxes are in the future. And do you think it's really beyond the scope of, of possibilities that our clients are going to be paying a third of everything they, they uh, bring in between state and federal taxes at a 33% tax bracket? But again, if you want it to be 15, put in 15. If you want it to be 50, put in 50. This is a default. You put in whatever you want. 33% seems like a pretty good bet for most people going forward, however. So, but you can put in whatever you want there. And it will determine. So, these numbers here are going to determine the numbers that you see later on in the presentation. So any questions so far? So these are the variables. What you think you're, the, you, you will grow at, your, uh, your portfolio will grow, or their portfolio will grow at, how much uh, the, the life insurance, the, the trip insurance costs, and then you'll divide that by their total portfolio. That will give you the percentage withdrawal rate. You get that? You take what, what the life insurance will cost or the trip insurance will cost, you divide that by the total portfolio, and that will give you the withdrawal rate, or you, give, you put in the life insurance benefit and go backwards this way, and then you determine the assumed tax rate. Okay? What if it was one, one is uninsurable? Well, do you want to show this to somebody if one is un, uninsurable, guys? Do you think you want to show this to somebody if it's uninsurable? Come on, guys, this is not a very hard question. No, you don't. You don't want to show this to somebody if, if they're uninsurable. Now, 
What if you didn't know they were uninsurable, and then you found out during the process they became uninsur that they were uninsurable? Well, then here's what you do. You want to, um, uh, let me ask you a question. Did most of you guys wear seat belts when you were kids? Did most of you guys sit in uh, car safety seats when you were kids? No. But would you think about taking your kid out in a car now without a safety seat? No. So what happens is once you've seen safety, what do you want more than anything in the world? We, you want safety. So if I've shown this to somebody not knowing that they weren't insurable, and all of a sudden they saw all the things that they can save themselves of, uh, from and protect themselves from, they're going to want safety no matter how they can get it. So will they be satisfied with something less than perfect at that point? Possibly. And then you can go back and show them other things. You can show, say, well, we can get life insurance on this person, but we have to do a, a, a new care on this person, or we have to do a, com, a hybrid um, or a, uh, you know, all the different other things in, in your market. There's other products you can use for that person who's not insurable. It's not going to be a perfect trip. But at that point, they don't need any kind of safety they can get because they've seen safety. It's just like us. I, I can't, I would, I'm, I'm afraid to drive in a car now without a seatbelt. I'm afraid to drive in a car without a seatbelt, so I want to make sure that I have a seatbelt. And, and I would never take a kid out without a car seat. So once you've seen safety, even if it's not the best car seat in the world, at least if it's some kind of car seat, I'm, I'm going to want to use that. So you could go back and talk to your marketer, and they get you other types of products if you find out one's not insurable. Uh, what, we have a question here. Will this policy work with a survivorship policy? So let's see if you guys can give me an answer to that. Will this policy, what did I say about this life insurance benefit? It has to be, guys, the benefit has to be what? For them. So can it work with a, a survivorship policy is good for who? The kids. So no, survivorship policy will not work. This has to be a policy on the man and a policy on the woman. Because they have to see that it benefits them today, not somebody else a long time from now. Does that make sense? So good question, but no, it has to be, uh, survivorship policies are not going to work. It has to be, a, a, a policy on the man and a policy on the, on the woman. Okay? Okay, so now we put this in there, and, and uh, yes, we do not want to show them this, so we're going to go ahead and begin. So it's going to tell me for desktop. Oh, and this does work with iPad. This does work with um, uh, Google Chrome, and it works with Mozilla. But, Missy, it does not work with uh, Internet Explorer, correct? Well, I'll tell you. I'll, tell you. I'll make an executive decision. It does not work with uh, uh, Internet Explorer. They're still trying to figure that out. We don't know when or what, if they're going to be able to figure that out. But right now, they, it does not work. So you need to use either Google Chrome or Mozilla or an iPad. And it also okay. works on Safari. And Safari, yeah, with iPad, right? Or, yep. Yeah. Or any mobile, uh, Apple Mobile, yes. Or Apple Mac. Mobile. Any Mac. And mobile. it sometimes works with droids and sometimes doesn't work with droids, I found out, since I have a... a a Droid tablet. So you're going to be better off using an iPad or your a laptop with um, Mozilla or Google Chrome. And then you're going to want it to be, if you use a, um, um, a tablet, you're going to want to do it landscape, right? So that you can see it. So I'm going to go ahead and begin. So here's what, we're, what it has up there. First of all, you're going to uh, put the variable annuity up there. And we have uh, a video of, of Jeff and myself doing a um, role play of this all the way from front to end. Um, when we loaded it up, we had some technical difficulties, so we're trying to still figure that out, but we'll get that up as soon as we can. But what I want to do today is not go through the whole presentation, but, to sh but just to show you how the software works and looks. So remember, are we going to hammer their, uh, their investment? No, we're going to actually tell them that it's great. So uh, I'm going to start off the conversation with the fact that, hey, things are do things change? Yeah, the things always change. And do we want to be proactive or reactive? We want to be proactive. And I'm going to say, hey, and you were proactive with your variable annuity. Because here's the thing. When we look at your variable annuity, when we look at all the different things that can happen, is a variable annuity good with growth, income, safety, and tax protection? Well, let's walk through. Your variable annuity is obviously good with growth because what? It's invested in the market. And when the market goes up, things are great. You're doing fantastic. So. It's working very proactively for growth. How about income? Well, we found out that if things go to heck in a handbasket with growth, you've got that income benefit rider. So it's fantastic. It's guaranteed. And again, guys, am I doing? I'm going to be doing all the talking here. But regularly, or when we're, when you'll see in the video, when you know from being part of Five Q, do we do all the talking with this? 
Who does all the talking, or at least ha who should be doing at least 50% of the talking with this? They need to be doing 50%. So I'm asking questions and letting them make the decisions on these things. Because do I want to be selling it, or do I want them to sell it to themselves? I want them to sell it to themselves. So I'm going to say, and how about safety? Is your variable annuity safe? And they're going to say, yeah, because if the market goes down, I still have that income benefit, right? I have that guaranteed income. And how about for taxes? Is it tax protected? Yeah, it's tax deferred, right? So which means that if uh, I want to move the accounts around, I can. I'm not paying taxes until I want. So, so really, it's very proactive when it comes to those four things we want from all investments, right? But is there any perfect investment out there? No. I mean, can, you, can we, could we, uh, I mean, are there some, some uh, limitations to your variable annuity? What are they going to say with variable annuity? What's the very growth limitation to variable annuities? Well, the market can go down or what? Sideways. It also has what? Fees. Now, again, guys, this is the, the, the software is putting all these things in there for you. So you won't even have to uh, type in any of these things. It's all, it does it all for you, whether it's a variable annuity, a REIT, uh, bonds, managed portfolio, whatever it is, it has all of these things in here already for you. So income-wise, what's the limitations with income? Well, you know what? What was your first paycheck when you first uh, started working? Well, $300 a paycheck. Right. And, and if, th if that never went up, would that have affected your lifestyle? Yeah. And what do we call that? We call that inflation. So your income with this guaranteed income right is also a problem because there's no inflation protection. It's a fixed payment, is it? And how about safety? Well, the market can still go down, right? And I'm going through this fast because we've got about 20 minutes to get through the whole thing. So I'm going to kind of whip through this. But there, is, there will be a video up of the whole presentation here uh, in the next couple of days. So tax protection, well, the problem, the limitation is the more you make, the more you pay, right? So those are the limitations. How could we make the variable annuity better when it comes to growth? How could we make it better when it comes to growth? Well, we could have guaranteed growth. And guys, the client will come up with these things. You don't even have to prompt them. And, and these things are designed so that they'll, they'll come up with their, most of these answers. The income one, you're probably going to have to prompt them. And here's how you're going to prompt them. Say, so when it comes to income, how could, what's better than guaranteed income? And, and here's what I would ask you. Do you know how lotteries work? When somebody wins $300 million, do they take that in a lump sum? You know, when they make, win $300 million, they usually don't make $300 million, do they? They make $150. Why? Because they're given the option between income and lump sum, and what does every single person take? They take the lump sum. They walk away from half of their possible earnings. Instead of $300 million, they walk away with $150. Why? Because they want the lump sum. Why do they want the lump sum? Because we've learned that, what, a bird in the hand? It's better than two in the bush. And why is a bird in the hand worth, the, worth two in the bush? First of all, do you know if you're going to be around two years from now? I mean, we hope to be, but do we know that for sure? Do we know if the government's going to be around? We, we hope it is, but we don't know for sure. Do we know what, if they're going to invest appropriately at the, at the lottery place? I mean, so, so why does everybody take lump sum versus income? And, you know, and the client gets this. They do the same thing, right? How about safety? What's the safest thing you can have? A big chunk of money, right? If you've got a huge amount of money in the bank, do you feel a little bit financially safer or do you feel less safe? And tax protect, what's best uh, tax protection? What tax free is. And then what's the best, what, okay, so that's the, the that's uh, how it could be better. But what would be best? For example, with growth, if you had a guaranteed growth of 8%, but the market went up 15%, would you be happy? No, you'd be sad that you didn't get the uh, uh, 15% when you only got 8. But we you know if the market falls 30%, then you're happy to get the 8% guaranteed growth, right? So what would be best? Having your cake and eating it too. Both market growth and guaranteed growth would be the best, wouldn't it? And for income, what would be the best type of income? Well, I like get, get a guaranteed income, don't get me wrong, as long as I get that big additional lump sum as well, right? That would be best, getting income every single week or month and having a huge lump sum. That's the best thing, right? For safety, isn't that the same thing, having guaranteed income coming in, an additional lump sum? And can we get it much better than tax-free? Really can't, can we? So tax-free is the best. And I'm not giving you the whole script here, guys, because we, we don't have time to do that. But what I'm going to do here is say, so can I ask you a question? Are cars the same now as they were in the 1970s? And those, well, they can say no. Well, how are they different? Well, they're, you know, they get better gas mileage. Yeah, they get better gas mileage, and they go through a whole, whole list. How are cars di different? They get better gas mileage. They're more reliable. They're more convenient. They're more comfortable. They, they're, uh, uh, I mean, there are all sorts of reasons why they're better, right? Well, how about just uh, five years ago? Are, are cars, how are cars different from five years ago? Well, they're, they're better. Yeah, because if, if you had a choice to buy in a car 
for the same amount of money that was built today or five years ago, which one would you rather buy? Well, one today. Why? Because it's better. Yeah. So, so do you think that's the same in the in the investment industry? Do you think get, things get better or worse all the time? Well, they probably get better there too. Right. So when you invested in the variable annuity, guess what? That was the best thing available. Oh, I'm going to go through. Do you see this thing up here, guys? This bar. This is a kind of a quick. You can move back and forth through the presentation very rapidly by going to specific places in the presentation. That's what this bar up here is for. So if you get lost or need to go back and show them something, you can go back very quickly. So, so what I'm doing here then is I'm, I'm getting them to admit that, hey, things are different. I say your variable annuity was the best thing possible when you invested in it. But do you think things have gotten better? Yeah, they have. And in fact, there is something that gives you all these things. Market growth plus guaranteed growth, guaranteed income plus additional uh, in, uh, lump sum, all of these things. There's something that gives you. But do you think there's any perfect investment out there, guys? No, there's not. They all have what? Advantages and they all have what? Disadvantages. So even though this is the, this new thing that has been... Uh, developed is is the best thing out there right now. It has some disadvantages and disadvantages. And disadvantages, this is only about 60 to 70 percent of the people that want it can get it. So I'm not certain that you can even get this, but if you could, would you want to take a look at that? And what do you think they're going to say at this point, guys? And I, I've gone through this rapidly, but if they said, that they, if they gave you all of these things, and they gave you all of these things, and they gave you all these things, and said, yeah, 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 how many times have they said yes to the trip so far? Twelve times, right? Probably more than that. So when I say you want to see, and again, I've mentioned that only 60 70 percent of the people um, can get this, what have I done there? I've used scarcity, and I've also spoken the truth, because... When it comes to life insurance, only about 67% of people are going to get it. How many people are going to say they want to take a look at it? Everybody's going to say they want to take a look at it. So what do we do then? We go to the boat story. And we talk about uh, the fact that these boats are going to go on a long river cruise. And it could be three months, it could be 30 years. We don't know which. And they need both food and fuel. The great thing about food is they can find some along the way. Fuel, though, they have to bring all that they can bring, right? So we're going to talk about then the locals have seen many trips go down this river, and they've seen some go well, and they've seen some go very horribly wrong. So the locals go to these two boat captains, and they say, hey, what we'll do, if you would like, is we'll give you a radio. So if you ever need help, you ever need more food, more fuel, or any help whatsoever, radio us, and we'll come and help you. We just charge you a half a percent a month, a half a fish out of 100 fish. So if you have 100 fish, we're going to ask for a half a fish per month to help you out. Now, boat A captain says, yeah, I think that that's a good idea because I don't know what's, what we're going to facing here. I'd always like to be able to fall back and know we've got help to, 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 if we need it because I don't know what's going to happen. I, I have no crystal ball, and then having somebody to rely or fall back on, that seems like a good deal. Boat captain B says, no way. I'm a captain of my own destiny. I don't need any of your help, and you can take your, your offer and stick it where the sun don't shine. So which captain do you think is, hap or is smarter at this point? Boat A says, yes, I'll go ahead and take that offer. Or boat B, I don't want that offer. Can qualified money be incorporated in a trip? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and a question, can qualified money be, yeah, that's why we have the, the question there. It says qualified money or not qualified money. Okay, so you have boat captain A, boat captain B, they take off down the, the river. And, they, you know, at first things go well. They find additional food every month. So boat captain B, he's, he's happy because he's not tapping into his food supply and it keeps growing, 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 growing. He's happy. How about well, Captain A? Well, their food supply is growing too. It grows a half a percent slower. But for all intents and purposes, does that really affect their lifestyle at all? Because if their food supply is still growing every single month, does that affect their lifestyle? Do they have to change the way they eat? Do they have to change the way they live at all? So if we had a druthers, we'd rather have not have to pay that. But really, is it affecting their lifestyle at all? Glenn says, no, I agree. It's not really changing the lifestyle at all. I mean, if I had my druthers, I wouldn't want to pay it. But as long as it's not affecting my lifestyle, I really don't care one way or the other, do I? Then we go down the river again, and then, hey, do, do people sometimes get sick or hurt uh, when, uh, on, on trips? Sure. And if it's a loved one, what will you do to get them well? So let's say uh, on this trip, and again, I'm going very rapidly through this, much more rapidly than you would with a client. But, uh, so if um, somebody's got sick, they've got 104 temperature, they're, they're, start to, they're dehydrated, start to go into shock, what will you do to get, the, get them well? you do anything, right? So boat B... They said, no, I don't need any help from the locals, but they're up a crick now, right? So they do flag down some locals and say, hey, we need some help. But what do the locals say? Tough duty. You didn't want any help before, so we're not going to help you. But they say, well, is there anything we could do to get your help? Because you'll do anything for a loved one, right? And the locals say, okay, if 
you want our help, here's the deal. Give us half your food, and then we'll help out. So what are you going to do with the loved one? Well, you're going to give them half the food. But now how is that going to affect your lifestyle? What is, what is your every waking moment going to revolve around? Food. At every single meal, you're wondering what? Are we feeding too much? Every time you see one of your friends or your family throw food out in the garbage, what are you going to do? Get upset. So your whole life starts to revolve around, hey, we don't have enough food. How does, what does that do for stress? What's that do for lifestyle? Now, of course, Bode, remember what they did? They called on the radio and said, hey, we have somebody who's sick, and what do the locals do? They show up, help out, no cost. Which boat was smarter? Boat A. Going on down, you know what? Our boats hit some rocks, puncture our fuel tanks, and we lose a third to half our fuel before we even know what happens. Boat Captain B, what can they do? There is no option to refuel. They're, they can't call the locals for refueling, so they just have to what? Pull out the oars. So that means in the mosquito-fested night, what are they doing? They're rowing. In the 115-degree days with 100% humidity, what are they doing? They're rowing. How does that affect their lifestyle. Happy or not happy? Which Now, in boat A, what they do is they call up the locals and what do the locals do? They come and refuel the boat. So which boat captain was smarter, A or B? Hey. They go on down. Now we've been out for a while and, uh-oh, uh -oh, we've got some damage to our food supplies. Maybe some water got in there, some mildew. So our food supplies are dwindling and we're not finding as much fish or grapes or whatever on the side that we, we found before. So what's going to happen with boat B? Well, guess what? They're running out of supplies, and they're living hand to mouth. How stressful is that? Now, boat captain A, guess what? They're also living hand to mouth. So if they're living hand to mouth, can they afford to pay the locals anymore? No, they call up the locals and say, listen, that, that half a fish we're sending you per month, we need that now. We're, we're eating that ourselves. We can't send that to you anymore. So here's what the locals say. They say, okay, we'll resupply you just one last time, and then we'll call it good. So now which boat would you rather be on? The one that's totally out of supplies or the one that gets resupplied one last time and then call it good? Yeah, boat captain A. So when we when we were on our trip here, when we had, you know, everything was going great and, and we had more food than we knew what to do with, which, you know, were you affected either way on boat A or boat B? No. So did it really matter which boat you're on? No. But when somebody got sick, did it matter which boat you're on? Yeah, which boat did you want to be on? A. Why? Because they got help and the other one, they, they were out of food and they were really getting worried about it. Yeah, exactly. And you know when you ran and when you hit lost all that fuel, which you know which boat did you want to be on? A. Why? And again, we're just telling them why, why, why. They're selling themselves on why they want the trip. Same thing here. Supplies dwindling. Would you rather have to be out of supplies or have get resupplied one last time? And what are they going to say? Resupplied one last time. Okay. So, but we're not here to talk about a jungle trip. But you know what? It is kind of like retirement. Do we know how long retirement is going to last? Whether it's going to be three months or thirty years? We don't know that, do we? So it's the same kind of thing. So. You could just keep your variable annuity and have the icing on the top, which is, which is trip protection. So what we could do is keep our variable annuity but say, hey, I'd like the locals to help me in case anything ever happens. So let's go on our trip. Now, instead of food, we call that our, market, or, or, our investments. So if our investments are going up, are you happy with your variable annuity? Certainly you're happy. Absolutely. Are you happy with your trip? Yeah. It's just going to go up a half a percent slower. But does that mean you can't buy the Learjet you've always had your eye on? Does that mean you can't go uh, buy that mansion you always had? Is it really going to change your, uh, your, your, your lifestyle at all if your account goes up a little bit slower as long as it keeps growing? Is that going to affect your lifestyle at all? No. So if you had your druthers, you'd rather be the variable annuity, but having the trip protection, is that affecting your lifestyle? No. Now, as time goes on, you know, if somebody gets sick or hurt, the fact is, in retirement, can we get sick? And if we get sick, are there some things that Medicare will not pay for? I mean, do you know people things get sick and Medicare won't pay for things? Yes. And are those usually cheap or are they expensive? Yeah, they're expensive. And do some people some te sometimes need long-term care, have dementia, Alzheimer's, or need some sort of long-term care? And when that happens, what's going to happen to your variable annuity? You, you know, how much does long-term care cost nowadays? Over $70,000 a year. How quickly will that drain your account? And when that happens, what do you, what's your whole world start to revolve around? The fact that your account's draining. I've seen it, folks. I mean, I've seen a person who needs care. What do they want to do? When they see it's draining their accounts and it's affecting their, their spouse when they're gone, what do they want to do? They just want to what? And they'll tell you. 
They want to pass away. They don't want to stick around because they know they're hurting their spouse. It's stressful, isn't it? But with the trip, guess what? Your account value is untouched. Why is it untouched, guys? Because two reasons. Either number one, you put a long-term care or a medical rider on there, or let's say you didn't put a rider on there. What do we know is going to happen when that other spouse dies? What's going to happen when the other spouse dies, guys? When the spouse that has the medical condition dies, what's going to happen to the surviving spouse? What are they going to get? Yeah, they're going to get paid the death benefit, tax-free. Exactly right. So that's how you can say it's, you're going to replenish the money. Exactly right. So which boat do you want to be in, the variable annuity or the variable annuity with the trip protection? What are they going to say? The trip protection. So we go on down here. You know, there's two things that I see that really stress people out in retirement. Number one is when uh, a spouse uh, has a medical condition that causes a lot of financial hardship. But I'll tell you, the second biggest thing is when a spouse passes away. Because right now, how many Social Security checks do you get? Two. Hmm. When one person dies, what happens to the number of Social Security checks you get? Oh, we lose one. Well, that means instead of losing a third to half of your fuel, you're going to lose a third to half of what? Your Social Security, your income. Your income is going to instantaneously go down by a third to one half. So how's that going to affect your lifestyle? How's that going to affect the stress level? Do you see why that's the second biggest thing that causes stress for my clients? And with the variable annuity, what happens? Well, you're out that money. You're going to have to figure out another way to replenish it. But guess what? With the trip, the half to a third is still gone, but the trip replaces that amount with inflation protection. It's going to give them uh, actually more income to, to keep ahead of with inflation. Because let me ask you a question. Is Social Security keeping up with inflation? And guess what they all know? It's not. But guess what? This will replace all the Social Security and then some with an inflation protection plan. So which one do you want? The variable annuity or the variable annuity with the trip protection? You know, and then we had our supplies dwindling, which is the same thing as the accounts going down. With the accounts going down, guess what's going to happen to your variable annuity? Your account's going to drain. But with the trip, what happens is you, the, the spouse gets to press a reset button, and all of the, the account value that's gone down is but what? Is replenished. So which one would you rather have, the variable annuity or the trip? So when things going well, you know, we'd rather not have to pay for the trip, but don't get anything for free. But is it really affecting us and our lifestyle if, if the accounts are going up? No, it doesn't, does it? Now, however, if we have a Medicare uh, or an illness that's not covered by Medicare, or we have an illness that requires long-term care, now which boat do we want to be in? The trip boat or the variable annuity boat? And when a spouse passes, which boat do we want to be in? The trip boat or the variable annuity boat? And when the, sp uh, when the market goes down, which boat do we want to be in? The trip boat or the variable annuity boat? And what are they going to say during all of these things? Yes, yes. So how many times have they told me now they want the trip between the first uh, part and the second part? How many times have they told me they want the trip, 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 trip? Uh, in last scene, spouse presses reset button and the account is replenished. How is the account replenished, John is asking? How is the account replenished, guys? And this is something that, you, that stresses why it's good for them today. The death benefit, Fred says. Yes, the death benefit. So even if they're spending money, can, does this allow them to spend more money than they would normally spend? Yes. Why? Because they know at the death of one of them, and what's the chance of one of them dying? Guys, what's the chance of one of them dying? Trick question. What's the chance of one of them dying? 50%? No, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. One of them's going to die, right? Now, you're right, when the 50-50 people, you're right. There's a, uh, um, once you hit 58 and a half, your chance of dying goes up considerably because of the, uh, ch ch uh, the, the average age of a widower or a widower in the United States. But you have a 100% chance of them, one of them dying, and at that point, their accounts are going to be replenished. So think about this. The average widower or widower is at 58 and a half in the United States. But here's the thing. The surviving spouse, how long are they likely to live? A short time or a long time? So you get double whammied. You're likely to become a widow or widower earlier than most people think. Is do most people think it's 58 and a half? No, most people, like myself, I thought it was like 70 or something. It's 58 and a half. So you're much likely to become a widow or widower much sooner than we thought. And then the, the surviving spouse is likely to live much longer than we thought. 
which is why the trip is so necessary. Do you get that? We're much more likely to become a widower or widower than we ever thought, and the surviving spouse is, is, is likely to live much longer than we thought. That's why having this amount of money that when a spouse dies, their accounts are replenished or they get an additional chunk of tax-free money is so beneficial to them and why it affects them today, not 20 years from now, but today. Because if their spouse dies tomorrow, when will they get that benefit? Now, also, if, I mean, we've all heard this before, how many people actually end up, I mean, how many annuities are sitting there that will never be spent? What percentage of annuities are sitting there that will never be spent? Yes, John says 98. I mean, there's all sorts of different figures, but there's an awful lot of money there that will never be spent. Why? Because the people have it uh, in, in the account just in case. And there is no better just-in-case uh, account than the trip. The trip is the, 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 the most fabulous just-in-case account you'll ever come across. Because could they spend more money while they're living? Does the trip allow them to spend more money than they would normally spend while they're living? Yes, it does. You're getting a lot of yeses. Yes, yes, yes. Because th th this, they know that at the death of one spouse, boom, they get a big chunk of money. Does that make sense to everybody? Any questions? So the trip is about benefiting them, not somebody, uh, after somebody else after they're dead. Because remember, it's on a husband and a wife. So no matter who dies, the other one's going to benefit. So it benefits them, and it benefits them now. Because, it, it, first of all, it gives them much more peace of mind. Second of all, if it, uh, we don't know when they're going to die, it will benefit them immediately from the, the time one of them dies. Uh, third is if they need long-term care, it's going to benefit them immediately because they, uh, they, they know their account's not draining. And it allows them to spend more money if they wanted to, knowing that the surviving spouse is going to eventually get the, the entire account replenished. Does that make sense? And here's the thing. At the end... With a variable annuity, you just get whatever's left in the account. But with the trip, you get whatever's left in the account plus two additional accounts. And here's what I mean by that. Now we're going to go through um, all the different things. I'm going to kind of rush to this. Uh-oh. Oh, no. What happened, Missy? Uh, just go up to the bar. Yeah, go back one. I think you clicked through a little fast. Okay, will that work? There, there, ah, there we go. go. So for, and then you're going to transition over to, should we make sure that, because they, they bought, with the boat story, they bought it emotionally. Now we're going to go through and address it on a, on a what? Factual basis. Okay? It's going to say, so let's look at all the different things that can happen. Can the stock market go up? Yeah. What else can it do? Go down. It uh, could be a situation where we don't need income. Yeah. But, or we might what? Need income. Could there be a situation where we had a, a health care cost or long-term care? Yeah. And do we know at some point when this process is going to pass? Yes. So should we take a look at how the variable annuity differs from the variable annuity with the trip qualified life policy? Yeah, let's take a look at that. So here's the thing. When the stock market goes up, your variable annuity goes up. But with the trip, it goes up 2% slower. Now, why do we say that? Because remember, we said um, at the beginning when we put in the, the amounts, we said the, that the, um, uh, the percentage that we're pulling out is 3%. When we, and because this is a qualified account, a 3% growth would simply be, uh, because of the tax, when we add the tax into that 33% tax rate, it would be, sim uh, it'd be uh, the same as the account growing at 2%. Because when the uh, uh, qualified account grows at 3%, do we get all that money? No. We are actually only going to get about 2% of that money. So that's what we're saying. So we're letting them know that, hey, the trip is not free. It does cost money. Your account's going to grow 2% slower. But if, the, if your account goes up 10%, if it only goes up 8%, is that really affecting you, your lifestyle? If, your account, if the account goes up 8% and you only get 6%, is that really affecting your lifestyle? So really, I mean, we'd rather have the 8 than the 6, or we'd rather have the 10 than the 8, but does it really affect your lifestyle when you lose that 2%? And guys, let me ask you a question. What's the average person paying inside their VA anyways? This is a hell of a lot cheaper than what they're paying in their VA. Yeah, so this is cheaper than what they're paying in their VA. But here's the additional. They get $150,000 tax-free for that, for that slower growth. And here it gets even better, because first of all, that $150,000 tax-free is the equivalent of having a $223,000, almost a $224,000 account, because of that, if it was in a uh, uh, qualified account, right? So they're basically getting a, an, another account of $224,000, which, of course, they'd only net one hundred fifty after taxes. Plus, their kids will get a, so their spouse is going to get $150,000. 
tax free, and their kids are going to get $150,000 tax free. So it's a three for one. They get their account value, whatever's in the VA, plus they get $150,000 tax free, plus the kids get $150,000 tax free. One, two, three accounts for one, versus just the variable annuity where you get what? One account. Now, what happens when the stock market goes down? Well, the, your value of your variable annuity is going to go down. The trip's going to go down 2% faster, but you get what? $150,000 tax free. Oh, so, uh, John's asking, will this always show 150? No. Guys, what is this going to show, guys? Those original numbers that you put in there on how much the growth rate would be, how much the percentage you're pulling out is going to be, and what the death benefit is, that's what's going to show up on these pages. So it's what you originally put in there. So yeah, your account's going down 2% faster, but what's happening? You're going to get $150,000 tax-free. You're going to feel like you hit the jackpot, right? And the difference? Account value plus 150 plus the 150. Don't need income, same thing. Account goes up, account goes up 2% slower, but you get $150,000 tax free. Three for one. Need income? Well, you, if you need the income, you're going to withdraw that 3% that we're talking about. You're still going to do that with a trip qualified plan, which means that you can't pay for the trip anymore. And then you're going to get somewhat less than, see the less than sign? You're still going to get less than the $150,000 at that point. So let's talk about this. If they need income, to the point where they can no longer be paying for the trip, what are their options? Well, first of all, insurance is insurance. So did it perform like it was supposed to while they're paying for it? Yes. If you stop paying for your home insurance, you stop paying for your car insurance, what happens? You lose the insurance, right? So it did do what it was supposed to do. But there are some other options here other than just dropping it. Number one is if they've had it long enough and they're old enough, they could do what? A life settlement. Somebody else will buy that life insurance for them. Second thing is guess when we talk about this 150 and 150, who's going to benefit from this? The kids. So could they approach their kids if they could no longer afford it? Sure. And the other thing is they could do is what? A reverse mortgage to pay for it. So they have three op four options. Just drop the insurance or they could have uh, 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 shop it for life settlement. You could shop it for life settlement for them. Or you could do a reverse mortgage to pay for it. Or you could go to the kids and pay for the insurance because the kids are going to make an awful uh, good investment for the kids, isn't it? So you can do any of those things, and which means they're going to get $150,000 uh, $150, or less tax-free. Same thing, account value, less than $150,000, less than $150,000. So this is the only neutral. It's not bad. It's neutral. This is great, great, great neutral, and then we go back to what? Great again. Because if one spouse needs long-term care or has a Medicare uh, situation that they're not paying for the, the, the medical uh, uh, event that's occurring, Medicare won't pay for it, their account's draining. Well, it's going to drain with the trip, too, but they get $150,000 tax-free. Again, why? Because either you have a rider on there, which will pay for the long-term care, or at the death of that spouse that's ill, the surviving spouse is going to have their accounts, what? Replenished with $150,000 tax-free. So, in the end, you get three for one. Account value, 150 150 Once the spouse, spouse passes, you're going to lose a third to half of your Social Security. Same thing with the trip, but the trip's going to give you $150,000 tax-free, which will more than uh, pay back for the uh, missing income and uh, inflation protection on top of that. And again, you get a three for one. Okay? So that, and a little bit after, that's the trip policy. So have, has any of your clients, now, have I mentioned life insurance really at this point? No. At this point, then I'm going to talk about life insurance, but it's not life insurance, is it? Is this just life insurance? Because do people want life insurance? No. But do they want to protect themselves from the markets going down? Does this do that? Do they want to protect themselves from interest rates staying low? Does this do that? Do they want to protect themselves from uh, uh, an unforeseen medical cost? Does this do that? Yes. Do they want to protect themselves from the economy going down around the ears? Yes. Do they do that? Do, do they want to protect themselves from inflation? Yes. Does this do that? Do they want to protect them? Yes, you're right. It's Dale saying it's lifestyle insurance. You're exactly right. This is protecting their lifestyle. And guess how many people want to protect their lifestyle, their independence, everybody. So has anybody? So we're presenting this. At this point, guess how much they want this. And then you're going to have to say, now only 60 to 70 percent of people get it. Should we see if you're one of that 60 to 70 percent? And what are they going to say? What do you think they're going to say? Let's say yes. So then what you do is you take a, a, on the the um, trip. Um, site where you when you first come in there are a couple of forms and there's a quick form that you can take and you'll ask about 12 questions so then you can take those 12 questions you know, 
diabetes? Do they have heart problems? Blah, blah, blah. Very, very, very quick questions. And you say, well, you know what? Here's what we'll do. We'll set an appointment for a week out. Let me go back and see if you qualify. And then you take those 12 questions, bring it to your marketer. They'll shop the life policy that will give them the highest be benefit for the least amount of cost. And then you can come back with an actual quote for them. So how many people have, will have seen this trip presentation that you show the two? Guys, do you want to try to convince them that your money manager is better than theirs? Do you want to try to convince them that your mutual fund is better than the one they have? Do you want to try to convince them that the annuity you have is better? That's hard. It's a lot easier to show them something they've never heard of before or seen before because then they say, hmm, I've never seen this before. Let's do it. So this will make you a, a, somewhere between five or six thousand dollars. It costs about five or six thousand dollars. You make about five or six thousand dollars. It's not a bad way to, to bring in money because keep in mind, let's say you've been back to your uh, uh, clients' accounts and they are all locked up. What if their money's all locked up in REITs? Can you do this? If your money's all locked up in REITs and you can't get the money out, can they do this? Can they do this? Are we asking them to move any money, guys? No. All we're doing is what? Taking a little interest off the top. They're just paying a little bit of interest off the top to pay for the policy. So for now, you can go back to all of your clients, ages 55 to 72, or even a little higher if they're healthy, and you can now make additional income and give your clients additional protection and additional lifestyle protection without moving any single um, uh, cent of their, of their actual principal. You're just going to take a little interest off the top. So then once you have them buying this, what might happen or just may get another, yeah, you might get some of their other accounts. Glenn, you're exactly right. Showing them this, they're saying, I've never seen this before. You're bringing me things that nobody else has shown me before. Wow, you're the real deal, and you may get some other uh, of their other accounts. You're exactly right. And I will tell you this, you've never seen a trailer like this before. Because when one of the spouse dies, who will they call for this $150,000? You. They're going to call you. They're going to say, my spouse died. Uh, how do I get the money? And then they're going to say, what should I do with it? So here's the trailer. Think about this. Guys, <laughs> just pull out your calculator. Now pull out your calculator a second. Let's say you sell five of these a month for a year. That's 60. So what's 60 times, uh, let's see, 150,000? Whoops, I didn't do it right. 60 times 150,000 equals 9 million. That's 9 million. If you do that for three years times three, that's what? 27 million. That's 27 million. That's $27 million in new money that you're going to get sometime in the next 10 to 15 years as spouses pass away, just by, by selling five of these a month for three years. And then multiply that 27 million times 6% because you'd go ahead and sell them another annuity or another whatever times 0 0.06 equals $1.62 million in income. We're not talking, we're not talking 1.62 in assets. We're talking 1.62 million in trailer income over the next 10 to 15 years if you just sell four or five of these a month. Do you see the power of this thing for your cl clients and the protection it provides? Do you see that it applies to them now, not somebody they don't know or, 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 or some way that they can't benefit from later? They get the benefits now, and it applies to them. And it's giving them lifestyle protection, and it gives you income where you didn't know or thought you couldn't get any more. And as Glenn points out, it, it, it could po quite possibly bring you in more accounts that you didn't even know about. And as I'm pointing out right here, it gives you an unbelievable trailer. What's the worst thing that can happen when you show somebody this? Will anybody be angry if you show them this? Does anybody ever get angry when you show them a new concept? So how many people should you show this to? Everybody. That is insurable. Uh, is there a dinner workshop for, this, for the trip? No, here's the thing. With um, anything that requires underwriting, it's a much more difficult for sale, isn't it? So we have uh, uh, created a focus group for the trip to do the trip presentation, and we've uh, uh, modified the property casualty, which I'll go over here in the, probably the next month, 
uh, as it applies to the trip. The, the property casualty could be a huge thing with the trip because property casualty agents are much more open to life insurance than they are to you taking over their client's assets, and I'll explain to that when we when we get there. So we have a focus group that applies to um, the trip, and uh, you know you could possibly do this as a as a as a seminar, but again, um, having to do underwriting with new people. There's, remember, there's a lot of moving parts for underwriting, which your current clients are very forgiving of, and prospects would might be less forgiving of. So you want to go back to your current clients first. Once you've mastered this, and you're 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 a master at, at doing the trip presentation, then you can go out and start prospecting with it. And yes, I think it's a good prospecting tool because again, it's something what? Why would this be a good prospecting tool? It's something that what? When you do a, a seminar and say, hey, I've got a better Mutual fund, I've got a better variable annuity. Yeah, nobody's seen it before exactly. It's unique. It's unique. It's something new. Exactly right. So essentially, all I do for a presentation is to do the actual presentation with them. I, I make sure I'm at a, a place where I get the Internet, and I would actually do a presentation with Mary and Joe as a, uh, as a prospect and just walk right through it with that. Okay? So sorry I went a little bit long, but I want to get this uh, to you. And then, uh, like I said, we have the... Um, whole video on how to present it from front to back, and we're still <laughs> working through the technical difficulties. We may have to refilm that. If so, I think Jeff gets back on Wednesday or Thursday. We'll, we'll, have, we'll do it the, the minute he gets back and get up if we can't get the technical difficulties figured out with that. But please get in there and start playing with this so you become comfortable. Bring it back to your current clients first because, again, you want to show it to your current clients because you don't want somebody else showing it to them. It's a great way to make money from, money to, from clients and, and do the right thing for the clients, and then that will uh, fund all of your future marketing to do this with with the uh, prospects so get out with your current clients first then once you've mastered it then you can go out to prospects so that is the trip if you've got questions on the product call your marketer and they'll walk you through the product but again it works best with a guaranteed universal life you can do it with IU well I mean you can obviously hybridize this and put a little bit of extra cash value in there we give you a little bit less death benefit but it'll allow you to have some cash value there and grow I mean, there's a lot of ways you can use it, but in pure sense, it's a guaranteed universal life. You can do a lot of different things for it, and if they're not insurable, your marketer will work with you on how to deal with uh, other products. Because once they see this, they're going to want that protection. You can say, well, you can't get the best protection, but hey, look, it, we can get you this thing, whether it's a new care or a, a golden rule type of a, 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 um, um, policy or whatever it may be. So, I sorry for going along. Uh, what do you guys think of it? Is this something you can show to people? If they had three, oh, uh, John, sorry, has a good question. If they had three million dollars, uh, dollars, I just guess how much of it would you spend to protect? How much? Yeah. So again, this is as much an art as a science. I'm not gonna. If they have three million dollars. I'm not gonna try to get them to buy three million dollars of life insurance, am I? No. I might try to get them to buy a five hundred thousand dollar trip. Or uh, again, it's, you're gonna have to look at their accounts, see what you think is a uh, viable, and. Um, you know, maybe they have a variable annuity that they'll never touch. They've got four hundred thousand dollars in a variable annuity they'll never touch. That's what I would use then to fund uh, whatever I, whatever their trip was from that particular account. Because I could say, hey, you're never going to use this. Let's use this to fund the trip. Okay? Or or uh, um, you're just going to look at the, their uh, uh, portfolio and decide what you think is going to be best for them. What what do you think they're going to first of all ex uh, is best for them and what they'll accept? Okay? So it is an art and a science that you're going to have to work with your marketer to, to, to come up with what you think would be the best value. But I'll, I'll just be straight with you. Life ain't fair. The less money they have, the more they need trip. The more money they have, the less trip they'll need. They still need trip, they just need less of it. So more, they're going to use a higher percentage of their assets to fund trip if they have less money, and you're going to use a lesser percentage of their assets if they have more money. Just that's, I'm sorry, but that's unfair, but that's the way... Uh, Life works. So I appreciate you guys. I'm excited about this just because it is different from anything else out there. That's the kind of stuff you want to be presenting. So uh, play with it and then start using it. Uh, uh, get out there with your, your best clients and show it to them. And, and guys, then give me feedback. Are you getting pushback? Is there rough spots? I'll take that and I'll integrate it into the script so we'll smooth out any rough spots that we have over. So if you're running into any problems, let me know, and we'll take care of those, okay? So any questions before I let you guys go? Excellent. Well, I appreciate all you guys, and I am excited. So I uh, hope you have a great weekend. We'll talk to you all soon.
Thanks, everybody.